Because there's a goal in mind that makes it all pay off in the end. I think of <clears throat> Mel Gibson's movie done some years ago, The Passion of the Christ. And, um, this is a movie that uh, I don't really hesitate to recommend. It's, a, it's, it's, it's pretty good in terms of being faithful to God's word, into history, and the circumstances of the time. It's hard to watch Jesus' passion, the passion of the Christ. But what gives us a lot of pause is the recognition that the truth, the reality, historically, was even harder to watch. The torture was more intense. The suffering greater. The passion of the Christ. And why did he undergo the passion? Because he was passionate. He is passionate for you, for me. He is passionate for us to be saved from ourselves, from our sin, from the devil, from the world, from all the things that would hinder us from relationship with God. All the things that have tricked us, all the things that have made us stumble, all the things that have been roadblocks to our 
proper relationship with God and with one another. All the pain, all of that. He's passionate about relieving and he's passionate about being the answer for us in that suffering. That afflicts the whole world. We're talking about motive this evening in the meditation and we see it in the Word of God and the readings that we have. God's motive, the motive of His Son, Jesus Christ, to come to earth and go through all of this for you and for me, is love. Maybe nothing better expresses that love in words than John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the passion of our Lord. I invite you to witness that here this evening. Make it part of your life. This evening, but always as well. God so loved the world.
for the transgressors. Second reading is from the New Testament, the book of Hebrews. Written to the Hebrews, written to the Jews, to explain how Jesus was the fulfillment of the prophecies, like Isaiah, and to describe who Jesus is and what his purpose is and what he wanted to do. What was his passion, he tells us here. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, 
whom do you seek? And he answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? one of us too, to not give up, to not give in to despair, but trust Jesus enough to believe he can forgive even you, because he does. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. 
It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter was also with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. <clears throat> when he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand and said, Is that how you... Answer the high priest. Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. between the spiritual and the material, between the worldly and the divine. And Pilate, representing the world and all those lusts and the power of it, the money, the influence, 
all the political games that went along with his position. But like so many people wanted to avoid the real issue here, wanted to avoid confronting true truth, wanted to dodge and duck and weave. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He speaks truth to power here. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about you? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I'm the king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have the custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. But Barabbas was robbed. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hey, I'll king of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I'm bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He answered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, which is in the Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief 
priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. chapter of the Bible, we have the first prophecy about what now is to take place. God speaks to Satan and says, you will crush his heel, but he will crush your head. How long had the Son of God been waiting for this moment? What a burden to bear. And he did. We are the reason. We're loved. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross and read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am the King of the Jews. But Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. 
Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you also may believe. If these things took place, the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. 
And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Brought back into the faith by a then girlfriend. 
And then he resolved to go into the ministry and become a priest. And uh, his uh, passed away in 2014 at age 50. So Wahlberg and uh, Gibson wanted to do this biopic film about the man's life. And the transition of it from a non-believer to a believer. Now God can take a very rough person and change him. Now, we of course as Lutherans, we're not very good Catholics, right? According to some, we're Catholic light. <laughs> but we have to respect the passion of people who, have, who we share the creeds with, the basic doctrines of the church, of God himself, drawn from scripture. Yes, we've had our disagreements and do still. But there's a shared passion that we have with these folks who are willing to put themselves publicly out there for something that is not popular with those in power so often. God grant that we all have some passion in us that we would be willing to risk the cause of Christ. So we still have to watch the movie. And if, if I give it a bad review, I'll come back and correct everything I've said. Except for the passion part. John the Apostle was a passionate man. Jesus called him a son of thunder. We see a bit of humor there. At one time, the disciples like to argue amongst themselves who would be the greatest. Hey, Lord, can I sit on your right hand? We want to rule with the Messiah. This is how it's really cool. This is what we want to do. And Jesus would have to reprove them and say, I did not come for that. I came to serve. I'm going to lay down my life as a sacrifice for many. John was passionate. We see the passion in the story here that I've been reading to you from the Gospel of John. He gives a very extensive account of Jesus' arrest, his trial, and his crucifixion. And he maintains a degree of objectivity through much of this, describing the events, horrific as they are, sticking to the facts and walking us through what's going on here. But here, in this portion that I just read, in verse 35, there's a parenthetical remark he makes. He interrupts the narrative. He cannot help himself. He is passionate here. So he breaks the train of thought. He just said, one of the soldiers pierced his side with the spear, and once it came out blood and water, he's describing these things. By the way, the blood and water, that's a sign of true death, not just a coma. But he breaks the train of thought. He makes this parenthetical remark. He has this overwhelming feeling that leads to an impulsive interjection. It's almost a cry out. He says this, and he always speaks in the third person. He talks about the disciple of Jesus' love. He talked about the disciple going with Peter. He's the guy. But he doesn't want to feature himself. So he describes himself in the third person. He, he says, he who saw it has borne witness. This is a word in the Greek, it's martyria, where we get our word martyr from. It means to see something, but then also to give testimony about it, publicly even. John has both witnessed and seen with his own eyes the crucifixion of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the blood and water flowing from his side. Not only has seen it, but now he's got to tell everybody about it, including us here this evening. He who saw it as born witness, 
his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth. Why? That you, 2,000 years later, that you also may believe. He's passionate that you sitting there also believe. Why? Because he believes. He knows the truth. He knows the person who is the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. The one way to salvation, the one way to God's presence, the one person who can lead us to heaven. He has the same love that Jesus himself had. He loves you. He wants you to know the story so that you too can be saved. So that you too can enter into God's presence. That you too can have life eternal that starts now when your life is transformed. God bless John the Apostle for his passion. For his words that give us hope and life and purpose. Our own reason that you also may believe. He wants you to know Jesus is passionate about you. So let's survey the wondrous cross. <clears throat> Tremble, tremble, tremble. 
thousand years ago and a thousand years before the events happened before the crucifixion the psalmist writes Psalm 22 and again almost like an eyewitness account we read this responsibly my God my God why have you forsaken me why are you so far from saving me from the world words of my groaning O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Asia surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joy. My heart is like ants, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks in my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. The violence encompasses me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the devil. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of my congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, Glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, but I has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall be and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Christ Jesus has indeed 
done it. It is finished. <laughs> Thank you. 